Okay, where do we begin? Uh, boy. What's up, guys? It's Dave here coming back to you with another video on the channel. And today's video is about this idiot. Jess, Jesse Liu? The founder and CEO of Rabbit HMI. Um, this dude's an idiot. Or chick, dude. I'm going to guess dude. I don't know. I'm going to say not the brightest bulb in the box. And there's a lot of proof that... Yeah, no idea what... Uh, has no idea what he's talking about. So we're going to go over... A series of posts from recently um, that were made, actually, well, not recently, but in January, uh, relating to, <coughs> excuse me, still trying to get over a sinus infection, relating to the Rabbit R1. Now, these are from before the item launched, uh, so a lot of this stuff has been proven false, and... I'll go over that with you guys. But let's just do my best here, and I'll start reading. Lots of people were asking, why not an app? Here's my personal opinions on a thread. So he's talking about making the Rabbit R1 handheld an app. If you don't know what the Rabbit R1 is, Rabbit R1, it is this little thing. It's a little AI box with a little touchscreen that... I'm getting ahead of myself, but runs Android 13. Uh, kind of a touchscreen, but the touchscreen is barely used. It, it, there's a lot. So, one, apps are relatively easy to build and easy to copy. Yes and no, but super hard on maintenance and create customer loyalty. We are t talking about at least you have to have two versions, iOS and Android. These platforms are fundamentally different. Yes and no, it depends on how you create the app. Um, if you create a web app, you don't even need to worry, and you can just have it be web-based. But that wouldn't really work in the long run of what they were trying to do with Rabbit R1. <coughs> so let's just continue. As an app, you need to feature matching... You need to be... This guy kind of sucks at talking, and so do I. As an app, you need to feature match all the time, and it's very painful and maintenance heavy again depends on how you create the app if you create it in a newbie sense yes it's a pain in the butt because you have two very different projects if you create it with a platform that is i don't want to say a one button compile and it'll just be like oh this is your ios build and this is your android build that really only exists with gaming and barely, there's still a lot of differences in iOS and Android, just like Mac OS and Windows. But at least with like Unity and stuff, they've made it easier. I don't know how that works as far as Java, C++, all that jazz. Um, the TNA on both platforms changes all the time. Not saying they were vicious, but they have the rights all the time to take you down. True. They can just take your app down if they really want to. So, by submitting as an app, you are submitting all your codes to them. Strike one, buddy. You are not submitting your code to Google or Apple. You are not. 100% you are not. If you have a Google Play developer account and you are putting an app on the App Store, you do not have to give them your code. 110%. You do not need to give them your code. That is completely false. Think about it. Remember, there's one of the most popular apps you want early days on the App Store called Flashlight. Now see what happens. Apple just incorporated the feature into iOS, so are building apps sustainable to a startup? Maybe not. Oh my god, it's a basic hardware feature. Like, it should have been part of the OS from the beginning to just hit a button and it turns on the flash to be a flashlight. That is a terrible comparison. That is idiotic at best. <clears throat> Let's see. So, I think this next bullet point number two is, like, hardware. Um, we can't put a V12 engine into... Or, 
we can't put a V12 engine to a horse and Tesla doesn't need one. What a dumb sentence. What does that even mean? LAM and Rabbit OS is a generation ahead of the current app-based OS. It doesn't fit. Rabbit OS doesn't need apps, but it is an app. It's been proven it's an app. Hold on a minute. Let me bring it up. Let's go over something to fill y'all in real quick. Guess who's back on Android phones? That's right, it's our little rabbit friend. Rabbit OS is not an operating system. It's an app. It's a launcher. That's all it is. We'll go over this in a little bit. Let's keep going on this idiot. Itty, it, itty, it, it's stupidity. Um, I didn't mean to go to that, but... Oh, and even if we build RabbitOS as an app, which they did, what's the end user's experience going to be like? You are opening one app to do multiple things on other apps you installed within, with 10 other notifications popping all over it. Surprisingly, that's how current experience of Siri is. They clearly have never used Siri. The user experience is conflicting with their design purposes. They have clearly never used Siri. Siri is not great by today's standards and definitely needs some updates. But they've this dude has never used Siri. But we understand bootstrapping any new hardware is hard. Luckily, I've created some of the best piece of hardware in my past 15 years. No, you took the Motorola... G Play 2 cut off a couple of the unneeded parts of the board and then threw it inside of a tiny box. Literally, the the Rabbit R1 is about the size of the motherboard of a Motorola G Play. And people have figured out that that's the exact hardware configuration is it almost identically matches a Motorola G Play. So you didn't create hardly anything. You took a phone apart, put a tinier screen to it, put a scroll wheel to it, which is actually just volume buttons on an Android phone, and put a camera to it. I believe there's a camera on it. I forget. I believe there is. I think this little thing is a camera or a light. I don't remember. But yeah, no, you didn't create shit. So... You, he created some stuff. He found some off-the-shelf stuff and put it to a little box. So the best way to perform as a startup is to de-risk on hardware. How can we create the best-looking quality piece of hardware that's capable of all the potentials of LAM, while at the same time lower the entry barriers for early adopters? Hence the 199 no subscription Tamagotchi Pokédex R1. Why would you compare it to a Pokedex or Tamagotchi? Anyway, if you ever worked on a massive produced hardware project, it's eh, that's pushing it. You understand that it's never pushing a boundaries of stacking cool parts, but quite the opposite. It's a painful process of compromises to find the best balance. As a result, the Rabbit R1 sits perfectly on the spot. It's God level design. No, it's a little orange box that's frankly not that good looking. And you can't get it in any other colors. God level design from TE. Retro culture resonating the good old fun tech era. Eh, with the best price on the market. Eh, it doesn't even work that great. Powered by our patented LAM that is offering features none of the other gadgets can do. Oh my god, this is only bullet point number three. I'm going to have a stroke by the end of this. Like, no, that's that's not at all what's going on here. Um, we are not saying you should dump your phone, nor do we delusional about it's better to carry two devices than one. Nor are we delusional about it being better to carry two devices than one. This is awful to read, regardless of where and how you carry them. But R1 is making a small dent in the industry by convincing our audience that, hey, look, it can do X amount of things that your phone can do, but much faster and more intuitive. Then we, then with teach mode, 
this is underrated and will likely continue to be user start users start to teach the rabbit os all the things your phone can do or cannot do <coughs> i uh all right so like i said let's go over to marcel over here cool guy from the little bit that i've seen through his twitter now if you lived under a rock like i said uh MKBHD gave this thing another kind of scathing review, the little rabbit R1. And the only thing that I'd say is there wasn't enough homework done for the that MKBHD, I think. As far as I'm aware, I watched the video. I don't think he realized it's just an Android device. Um, It took until after the video that people realized it. I wish he ha either had somebody on staff that knew how to do this kind of thing or would have waited just a little bit, but I also understand the YouTube world, you have to be first. So it's it's a double-edged sword. Guess who's back on the Android phones? That's right, it's our little rabbit friend. So there's been a lot of problems with people trying to get the Rabbit R1 launcher ABK to work on Android phones. I am in firm belief that these people that are hacking it and making it work on phones should release it because there's been so much lying from rabbit every single time these people make a crack or a stride forward in it working on a phone it's it's an app there is no learning model or ai based special hardware limitation or os it is a bare bones aosp android rom on the little device because it's just a motorola g play it's a Motorola G Play with an AOSP ROM with the Rabbit R1 launcher APK installed. That's it. That's all the Rabbit R1 is. That's it. So this is what people have fought through so far just in the last week trying to get the APK to work. IMEI checks. We discovered these literally don't exist and you still can just use any string as an IMEI so they can spoof it. Cool. Cool. Other header checks, these are obfuscated across a few files and even a C++ extension, but they aren't secure at all. We patched these into the app file and also patched it to not require system level permissions anymore. Very simple to do, surprisingly. Uh, Lucky Patrick can do that, actually. It can remove the system need. Um, I've used it a couple times. Sleep schedules. We need to stay up late because the only person which had physical access has the opposite time zone as the rest of us. Makes sense. IP bands. That's a good roadblock. That roadblock happens all the time with 1320 Challenge because SB is in Australia. So if him and I want to like correlate on ideas, I'm either up at 1 a.m. or he's up at 1 a.m. <laughs> uh, IP bands. A few members of the team, including me got ip banned from the servers fortunately we don't care and it was a vacation home so they got around the ip bands acquiring an updated app this was hellish but we figured out a way to eventually just dump the original rom and patch the ota updates onto it so that's actually very easy to do and i did fill marcel in to just adb logcat when it connects and you'll find the url that's how i've done it for game server uh, assets as well as uh, I've also done that with actual system OTAs. Remember when I was trying to hack the TCL 10 Pro? I had to use ADB Logcat to get the URL for the OTA update check. So anyway, blocked HTTP inspection tool. The app now uses certificate pinning. We can probably patch that out, but for now we haven't needed it. So the other way around that is with Fiddler. Fiddler has a tutorial on their website for Android phones to... Because anything after Android 6.0, uh, you have to use app pinning for monitoring the network traffic or else it just doesn't work. So Fiddler has a way that tells you how to modify the Android manifest.xml so you can actually use Fiddler to get into things and monitor what a specific app is doing. Um... This is the current latest OTA update with the latest app. There are a lot of fakes and knockoff apps going around Twitter and information about rooting of the device, but we have access to the official dumped app. 
the official servers, and a valid method to dump the entire ROM. No cheating here. Please note, we will not be sharing any files. I want the Rabbit R1 APK, and I will stream trying to crack it open. If anybody has it that sees this video, forward it to me. I'll give you credits if and when we get it cracked open and working. I'm sure I have the knowledge and expertise to do what they've kind of done. He says there's been a lot of work done, and I believe him. So that's why I kind of want to live stream, you know, trying to figure it out. You know, it's risky to do that, but I would definitely really like to take uh, a swing at it. So, you know, if somebody's willing to share it, you know, let me know. But uh, other than that, I'll talk to you guys later. I hope you guys enjoyed. The Rabbit R1 APK deserves to be leaked. The developers, every time people prove like, oh, it is an app. No, it's not. It needs to use libraries and stuff that are built into the operating system. No, it doesn't. It's all cloud-based. It's just an app. They need to stop fooling themselves and stop lying to people. That's how a startup fails.